This is the President McCormack Podcast with your host, Mark McCormack. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Today we have Eric Elgren. Welcome to the podcast, my friend. Thanks for having me. So um, it's fun uh, jumping on these podcasts, talking business. We were just talking a little bit about your business before we started. Um, pronunciation, say it for me. Ondar. Ondar. Yeah. <laughs> so what does it do? Uh, well, we sell a variety of different things. So we started off with wallets, quickly found out that you could only sell a wallet to the same person so many times and had to expand from there. So we went into tech cases, phone cases, uh, bags, and just expand it from there. Just seeing what the market wants and desires and we, we create it and put yeah. our own spin on it. And it's mostly leather goods, right? Yeah. From what I can sell. Yeah. yeah. We've got one, a couple of products in cork. So it's all about sustainability. Oh, okay. uh, you know, I know a lot of people when they think of leather, they don't necessarily think of sustainability. But I mean, if you get a full grain leather, which is what we use, I mean, that stuff will last you years and years. You know, most people have like, you know, a jacket, nice leather jacket that their grandpa has passed down for generations. And it's just like that thing's just still going. So we also have a cactus leather that we're coming out with here. What's that? Uh, it's just made out of a uh, uh, prickly pear cactus. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it the same process, like you tan it and all that kind of stuff? A little bit different. So we're we're not going to color this one. So it's going to be just green, kind of a natural natural green. We're calling it saguaro, so it's kind of deceiving in some sense. We yeah. don't want people to think that we're cutting down saguaros or anything, but <laughs> prickly pears have a pretty interesting um, manner of regenerating. So you just cut off one of the paddles, and it, I guess it regenerates after six to eight months. Oh, that's interesting. So, so how did you come across that as a material? I would, I mean, kind of hints to our ties. So we're, we're based out of Arizona. And so we wanted something else, just a, just a test really. And so we were looking at different materials and came upon cactus leather and we're just like, okay, let, let's see if this works. So sent it off to our manufacturers and they, they made it happen. So it's a little bit different. It doesn't scuff as much as, you know, maybe a wallet or a phone case, you know, with that full grain leather, but uh, it's still works. It's, it's pretty nice, though. So. Yeah. Doesn't patina as much as leather does. Kind of maintains. What is that? So you know, with a phone case, especially because you've got all the oils in your hands. Yeah. You'll you'll tend to notice a phone case will patina a lot faster than say a wallet because you tend to have your your hands holding your phone case more so than your wallet, and so those oils get into your phone case and just kind of darken it up, and it gives it that kind of a smoother um, darker appearance. So you may have like a tan that, you know, over the years may eventually turn into like a light brown. And so, oh, the, interesting. so the leather does that the leather patinas, the cactus leather does not per se. So we've, we've been testing about uh, six months and haven't noticed any kind of patina on the cactus leather. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, I mean, we've been testing it for six months now. We release it to the public here actually today. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see how it, how it turns out, how it patinas, if, if at all. So in your know. world, so sit on the phone cases, do people, I mean, do they really kind of geek out? Like every time you release something new, they're getting the new thing? Yeah, we definitely have our, you know, we call them um, Ondarians. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, the fans of Ondar. Uh, we've got our close, fru, uh, close friends group on, on Instagram, and they're, they're pretty fanatical, which is, which is always awesome because you love to ha see people love what you create. Yeah. But yeah, it's different. Um, it's fun to see different reviews pop up on YouTube and you know, you get tagged and you go and watch it and you're just like, wow, I never, never would have expected someone would have had that much passion about the product. Right. So yeah, it's fun to see. Yeah. I felt that same way with some of the things that I've done in life, you know, like even with like, you know, our, my basketball backstop company, you know, it's yeah. just like some people, man, like they're so particular about certain things. Like, so we did Celine Dion's um, personal home in Las Vegas a couple oh, cool. of years ago. And the reason why we did it is because her son at the time, I want to say he was 15. He was hell bent on having the exact same backstops that are in the Golden State Warriors practice facility. <laughs> right. So we did those like yeah. <clears throat> forever ago, 20, 25 years ago. Right. 
Like they've th since we put that in, they've actually they opened the Chase Center in San Francisco, and now they have their practice facility down in the basement that's full of all Spalding equipment, right? Yeah. So, but he yeah he got a couple pictures where he went there and visited and like literally took a picture of our logo, called us up, and was like, "We absolutely have to have these ones. This is what we want." That's cool. And it was like, okay, because <laughs> in our world, you know, ADP Lemco is the name of the company. It's not really brand specific. The, our brand exists inside of architectural specifications. So we're specified everywhere, which gives us the ability to bet on anything, right? So that's our right. market. But when it comes to like general knowledge of what the hell ADP Lemco is, like no one knows what it is, right? Yeah, I mean, that, that's one of the first things, I guess, because I knew your ties with ADP Lemco, but I didn't know everything behind it. So yeah. I, I think I sent you an Instagram message and uh, just give you props because I was playing on uh, the church court that night. And then like even earlier, I was at my son's basketball practice oh, yeah, yeah. and they were using you know and i see on both of them adp lemco you know just like man these things are everywhere yeah <laughs> so i had to dm you and give you props and oh thank you man yeah yeah no i remember that yeah we uh it, it's funny because once you know the name especially if you like me you know it's like oh it's mark's company and then like yeah. everywhere you go you're like what the heck i'm in texas and there's their hoops i'm in florida there's their hoops yeah because we yeah we're pretty much we're pretty heavy in about 35 states we don't go real east Mostly because we have to fly people out there, and I'd rather just do. There's enough work on the West Coast that we don't need right. to. But, but yeah, man, you go to Texas for a, kind of a battleground state for us. I mean, I bet twenty to thirty percent of every school has our stuff in it. So that's cool. Been at it for a minute. So. Yeah, <laughs> I tried to actually go through a rebrand at one point, and when I was kind of putting pen to paper, you know, we we're thinking about calling it ADP Sports or ADP Basketball. But they don't, that doesn't really encapsulate everything we do either, right? Because mm -hmm. we do like gym divider curtains and bleachers and right. scoreboards and volleyball. So it was like, I don't know what the hell to call this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't really like that. I've never used the, my name, my, my, you know, my Cormac Sports or something like that. Right. I've never really been big into. So what does the ADP stand for? So it stands for Architectural Design Products. Okay. And the famous ADPs, you know, automatic data processing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Funny story about that. I actually had a guy call me up one time and he was asking for a job, but he was kind of going about it in a roundabout way. So I became president of ADP Lemco at like 26, <laughs> right? So this is probably when I was 28. And he was older than me. He's probably late 30s, early 40s, right? Wanting to make a, a move. And he found yeah. out that I was the president of ADP. <laughs> And I get on the phone with him, and he's like, yeah, man, you know, I'd like to send my resume over, like, this whole thing. And I'm like, o okay, like, what do you want to do? Like, you want to go work in the shop? Like, what the hell, you know? And the more I was talking to him, I was like, it just kind of, like, dawned on me. I go, you don't think this is automatic data or uh, automated data processing, do you? Like, the payroll company? He goes, yeah. yeah. I go, <laughs> you think I'm the freaking president of that? <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, that's like a Fortune 500 company, man. Like, yeah. you know, they give economic data to the government. And he was like, oh. <laughs> he wants to do your payroll. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love, <laughs> love for that to happen. So, but no, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting world. So, in ADP Lemco, because in industry, inside the industry, it, you know, it's very, very well known. Yeah. You know, we really only have about three other competitors. And so... Us four, I mean, we're kind of like the big four, and we, you know, everyone kind of knows who we are. Plus, we're really aggressive and um, on the on the bidding side and, and landing projects and stuff like that. So all the contractors know who we are, you know, end users know who we are. But yeah, just general population, you know, it's just like, oh, that's cool. In fact, yeah. most of the time, I introduce myself and I just say I work in a manufacturing plant, you know, because I'm just like I don't want to go into everything that I have <laughs> put my fingers into. That's one way to say it. Yeah, they're just. Yeah. Don't want to continue the conversation after that. Yeah. Get a manufacturer. Okay. Yeah. No one thinks you're cool if you work there. It's like, I work in an ice cream shop, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> so with your business, so how long, how long have you guys been running for? Seven years, almost to the day. Yeah. Seven years. Yeah. What's the day you guys started? I think it was the 14th or 15th of October of 2015. Nice. I think 14th. Yeah. Nice. What made you want to start it? Um, actually, so my dad and brother started, um, in Arizona, I was up here in Utah and I, I was brought on soon after that. And so, you know, we've always had a side hustle growing up, always had something. So my dad's a CPA and he's got his own firm. And so we always thought growing up, okay, we're gonna go work for dad. We're gonna take over his firm. We're gonna build it. We're just gonna crush it. And it didn't take long to figure out that 
you know, after working for them and doing kind of doing the grunt work. You're just like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do taxes for the rest of my life. This is not, this is not me. This takes a special personality, I think. Yeah. You know, my dad, he's, he's very analytical. He's also very entrepreneurial as well. So, you know, we didn't get the tax bug, but we got the entrepreneurial bugs. He's always had other stuff that he's done, you know, buying and selling stuff or, you know, he has a, a YAG laser that he bought and would rent out to doctors and would take it to doctors so they could do cataracts and they would just oh, line really? up all the old people. It's just like, you wouldn't think of him doing <laughs> something like that. But, um, but then again, it's like, you wouldn't think of us creating a, a wallet company. Yeah. Yeah. It's always, what do you, well, what do you do? You know, initially it was like, yeah, we've got a wallet company. Okay. That's, that's weird. Yeah. Work in a manufacturing plant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then that's, you know, question stopped after that. So it's like, even then, like when people ask us, what do you do? It's always something different that we say, you know, and you know, we've got our head of brand that's got his pitch that he always says, our social media manager that she's got something she always says. And then you go to my brother and I, and it's like, okay, I, we do leather goods or, you know, sometimes we elaborate a little bit more and sometimes, yeah, it is that just like, yeah, we do this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we didn't really want to work for dad. Um, you know, doing the taxes and like I said, we've always had something, some side hustle, you know, that we've kind of saw him doing and, and, uh, Andar was really the first thing that kind of took off. And so we've just been plugging away for seven years now. Do you just feel like you, I mean, most of it's online marketing, right? Most of it. Yeah. yeah. I'd say probably 5% is wholesale yeah. at this point. We're not pushing it at all. It's kind of one of those cherry on top. You know, if it comes our way, every single um, uh, well, uh, wholesale partner that we've had has been through our online advertising. You get the buyers that that uh, ping us and say, hey, we want to carry your product. But and those are always the best, you know, someone wanting to have your product in their place. You know, that's the best way to go. That, right. Rather than trying to knock on someone's door and say, hey, yeah. you've got to carry us. Yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense. Did you guys learn the online marketing or did you hire somebody? No, we, we've bootstrapped the whole entire thing. So our, our initial purchase order was for $6,000. You know, dad covered that and had to pay him back, of course, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's always been bootstrapping. Um, I guess I can give you a little background on how I started, which is kind, kind of crazy. I, I think yeah. I shared this with you before. So back in... 20, so started in 2015, always just worked at it. I was a financial controller for 12 years before this. And, um, you know, I got the start with my dad and so got married and I was like, okay, got to find a job. This is my background this is what I'll do. And so I just kind of led one thing to another. And, you know, once you get down a certain point of like being a financial controller or a accountant or whatever, it's like, how do you scale back and do something different. It's really difficult to shift, but at the same time, it's like accounting is such a good background to have because you can pretty much do anything as far as business is concerned. And so, um, doing that, it was always like working till, you know, 12, one o'clock in the morning, just doing extra stuff to just get on to our started. And so back in 2017, we weren't really crushing it. Uh, I was still working full time. I was a controller of finance for a small business up in Draper and just got to a point where, um, yeah, they let me go. They had let go of, I think 10 other people at the time, you know, business wasn't doing so hot yeah. and I was kind of the last guy on their list. And one of those reasons being that I didn't get along with one of the owners there. And uh, when you're in accounting, it's very black and white and he wanted to do a lot of great things. And so I was just like, oh, I, you know, stood my ground and I'm a little stubborn that way. And so, yeah, they, they ended up letting me go, which ended up being the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Um, because I was let go on a Friday, on Sunday, uh, our phones just started blowing up. And if you know Shopify, they've got mm -hmm. this little notification every time you get a sell. It's like a cha-ching, cha-ching, right. you know, and it's pretty fun. We'd always have it on because uh, most of our business was done on Amazon. 
And we didn't sell a whole lot through our Shopify store. And so to hear those cha-chings were like, okay, yeah. It's like, you know, your, your success is, is on its way. Yeah. And uh, so we were probably only doing a couple thousand dollars a month even on, on Shopify. A bit more on Amazon. Yeah. Enough to sustain my brother a little bit more. Yeah. Um, you know, and he was putting in more, more time and yeah. energy. So it made sense for him to, to take that. And uh, just one Sunday afternoon, right after I got let go, uh, it just started blowing up. Just cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. And so I text my brother. I said, hey, what'd you do? And he goes, uh, nothing. What did you do? And I said, I, <laughs> nothing. I have no idea what's going on. So it wasn't a couple hours later that um, we found out that we got featured on, on a, I guess, an unboxing a YouTube channel. Oh, cool. So Unbox Therapy, he bought seven random wallets on Amazon. And he went through every single one, reviewed them, said what he liked about them, what he didn't like about them, got to our, our wallet. And uh, at the very end, he goes, world's best wallet, you know, the pilot from Ondar. So we're just like, what? It's That's pretty crazy. crazy. Yeah. You know, the timing of it was, was wild. Um, obviously sold out of everything. Yeah. And, uh, did he have a massive following or was it just big enough? I want to say he had five or 6 million at the time. Oh, yeah. so, and you know, this is 2017. So YouTube wasn't like YouTube it, that it is today. Yeah. And so I think he's got several million obviously on, on that particular video now, Yeah. but yeah, ended up selling out. We collected thousands of emails did a pre-order then a couple of weeks later we went live and did six figures in four hours. Nice. And the coolest part about it, you know, I'm not, I'm not one to like sit there and gloat or anything like that. Just say, Hey, look at me. Uh, but it did feel good going in because they gave me 30 days to find something else, you know, which was, which was nice. Oh, like a severance. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was still working, just t trying to tie things up. And, you know, I go back in after we do, you know, six figures in four hours and pretty much more than they had done in the last six months online because they were more of like a trade show company. Yeah. Um, so to go in there and just be like, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be okay. You know, it felt good. Well, that's awesome. I can't even, I've never done that. So I've never uh, had the euphoria of like just slaying it one day. On the internet. Yeah. I mean, timing is everything. You know, I believe that everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Um, so it's just kind of wild how I basically get fired and then, <laughs> all right, this is the path you go to. And, you know, and even then I didn't realize that, okay, this is what you should do. Because sometimes, you know, when you're like, okay, universe is telling you, you got to do this, you got to mm -hmm. go this way. And then it's like, uh, no, I don't, I don't believe it. Or I need a little bit more, you know, give me another sign. Well, you know, I, not that I had these conversations or anything or was thinking these things, but I was like, okay, I'm going to continue to see if I need to go get another job. Cause I didn't know if this would be sustainable, you know, if this was just kind of a fluke thing. And I, I probably put my resume out there to a hundred different companies and I got one interview. Jeez. So, so I was like, well, I guess this was 17, right? Yeah. 18, 17, yeah. 17. So this was like, you know, over a six month period. And so finally I was like, okay, maybe someone's trying to tell me, you know, this is your path. This is what you need to do. Yeah. So then, yeah, I was like, okay, let's buckle down. And yeah, like you, when you had asked, you know, how did you, did you hire someone? Yeah. Like we, we bootstrapped. I, you know, I was doing, I did the whole, um, what is it, fantasy football. Yeah. For the longest time, I was super analytical. I would spend hours. I'd be on my phone at 2 a.m. in the morning just, like, reading articles and, like, analyzing different players. And I was just like, you know, I, I won my last year. I retired on top. I've never <laughs> done it since. And then I used all that time that I had, that extra time to analyze, just jumped into Facebook. Yeah. Jumped into marketing, just tried to figure it out. And probably over that last, those six months, going into 2018, probably learned more than I did in in my entire MBA program. So yeah. just kind of self-taught and just, just grew from there. Cause we rode that video until 2018 and then jumped into 
Facebook ads and just expanded. Did you guys ever try and replicate that with other unboxing channels or? You know, we didn't. And I don't know why we didn't. I mean, we, we would seed product and we would give it to, you know, influencers. 2019 was good because we, we jumped into the influencer space. So I guess we did in some sense. It wasn't necessarily the unboxing route. Right. But it was more so influencers. So a lot of, a lot of women, a lot of mommy bloggers mm-hmm. who would be buying. I guess they wouldn't be buying necessarily. They would be telling individuals what to buy because that's that's the most effective way that we had learned was oftentimes people just want to be told what to buy right and it's like okay i don't know what to get my dad for father's day well here's a wallet this is why you should buy it yeah so we had a lot of success during the gift giving seasons did you do most of that with the influencers were you doing the affiliate program thing with a code um you guys do it different so we did it a little bit different because there were back in the day a lot of people, I guess it still is the same. They just wanted a rate. They just wanted to say, okay, pay me $2,000 and I will promote it. And then we would give them a code for a discount. And that was mostly just to track it on our end. And those individuals, they didn't necessarily care if they got a commission. Mm. But I'm our, our most successful influencers that we've used have been on a commission base. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, yeah. they've made pff, 10 times more money than anybody else that we've you know, and is that through the discount code? Yeah, right? just a discount code. Some of the codes are just for free shipping. You know, so it's not a significant discount, but it's at least something that we can track it and tie it back to that particular yeah. individual. Yeah. Yeah, influencer marketing is uh, is the way to, is the way to go. So, one of my companies that we're doing, um, we do spirits, you know, uh-huh. the alcohol world. Yeah. <laughs> and what we're doing is we're going to people who have an established brand already, right? They might not be, they might be in something totally different, right? right? And we bring in a spirit brand behind them because they're already brand marketing. They're already, you know, very conscious of, you know, everything inside that world, right? Right. And we just say, hey, do you guys want to sell liquor? And we just take their brand, slap it on it, and then we do the entire back end, right? And so we do yeah. all the fulfillment, all the making the juice, the distilling, the bottling, all that kind of stuff. And they, they just promote it. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's looking to be, it's a newer company. We started a couple months ago, but we've already got massive clients signed up and we're, we'll be launching our first two here in the next 60 days. And it's oh, going to cool. be, it's very, it's very, very lucrative. Because what I found with influencers is they're getting to the point, the big ones, the really successful ones, they're getting to the point where they don't even want to get fees per se or, or any of the affiliate traditional marketing. They want equity in the companies that they're promoting. Oh, really? And so what we actually do is we build a, an LLC for that brand mm-hmm. and then we take an equity piece, they take an equity piece and then we, we make them run with the whole thing. Interesting. So they do all the marketing. You just do all the fulfillment and the yeah. back end production. Yeah. And if you understand spirits, it's all marketing. Yeah. You know, are you, are you a drinker? I'm not. Yeah. Just water. Just water. I can drink soda. Stick to it. <laughs> <laughs> you'll live a long time. <laughs> won't have as much fun, but you'll live a long time. <laughs> but no, they, uh, <clears throat> you know, I mean, what's the difference between the, you know, 5,000 different types of vodka that are out there? Branding. Yeah, branding. Marketing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. it is what it is. I mean, there's some quality difference, but like very minimally. Inside their categories, there's none. Yeah, it's very hard to, I guess, distinguish between getting those different flavors because not everybody's palate is. Yeah is you know expanded as as others but. well and quite frankly a lot of a lot of alcohol is mixed right you know so you know like a screwdriver is like you know vodka and, and orange juice you know so yeah. when you're talking high high quality hitting your palate it almost doesn't matter because you're just going to pour it into a drink right you know you're going to put it in with sugar and mint and soda water or whatever right make a mojito or whatever yeah so yeah it's but it's uh it's a definitely a big lesson on branding because I have a few companies that I own that branding is important, but I have way more that it's not, which is funny. Probably is important, but we just don't do it. Right. You know? But then you come in like, you know, you know, goods and goods like you guys sell and it's, it's a big deal. Your branding's a big deal. You know, people see that and they, they associate it with something, you know, associated with yeah. quality or associated with a good time or, you know, and then they want to continue to buy because they know it's quality. Yeah. It's all about the, the customer experience at this point. Cause it's like, how do you, how do you differentiate yourself from, you know, the thousands of other leather companies out yeah. there. Cause it's like, I mean, I see it all the time. I go, you know, I'm on, I'm working on the, the website and obviously I've got our pixel on there and all the tracking and, 
then there's all the opportunities to retarget. And so you go on and yeah. just uh, perusing through Instagram or Facebook and you see your ads, but then you also see everybody else's ads. So it's always interesting to see what everybody else is doing. Um, and just seeing like, holy cow, there's so much to choose from. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, that's one of the things I like to do when I'm interested in something and I'll go like, okay, if it's like this kind of product, I'll go and I'll search for that. And it doesn't matter if, I'm even really interested in that particular company. Yeah. I just know I'm going to get retargeted for, you know, if it's like, say, pants, if I'm right. looking for some pants and I'm just like, okay, all of a sudden I'm going to get like 10 different companies that are advertising for pants. So at least then I have more options. I was just going to say, you look at that different than me. Because <laughs> I, I'm, I might be more of an impulse <laughs> buyer or at least I'm, when I go to buy, I know what I want, right? Right. So... So I bought um, PSD underwear, right? Do you know what that is? You haven't advertised that yet? Underwear? No. Yeah, you probably have. You'll, you'll see now. <laughs> I will now, yeah. Our I phones mean, will now yeah, talk to each other. Listening. Yeah, yeah. But dude, so I bought a couple pairs of their underwear, and they're kind of fun. They just have like fun prints on them, you know, or like, okay. you know, like a butterfly or like something funny, right? It's kind of like, I uh, can't even remember the name of the company, but so I get on, I buy their stuff. I'm done, you know, purchase is over. And then I get on Instagram and it's like freaking every four things, I, four ads yeah. I see are like underwear ads. And I'm like, I've already purchased. Do you ever opt you out? Do you click the Yeah, little... sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. If I get real annoyed with it. So. I, I see the same ads over and over. And sometimes I'll opt out and it's just like, look, I'm tired of seeing this. I'm not going to buy it. Yeah. I, you know, I appreciate the effort, but, you know, it's like. It's like a salesperson just coming at you like door to door, like, hey, buy solar, right? Buy solar. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but, you look like a perfect home for solar. Yeah. 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 Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. We had a gal last night stop by. She goes, yeah, I'm not, I'm not here to sell you anything. Two seconds later, she's in her pitch trying to sell a solar. I'm just like, come on. That's their new move. Not I'm not to here to anything. sell anything. Yeah. So what, like, are you, what are you doing then? Like, I'm not, I don't, I don't have time to chat. Yeah. Can I help you? <laughs> yeah. You know I mean? I, yeah. I, I don't know if that's like a disarming thing. That'll end up backfiring hard, though. Yeah. I'm surprised it doesn't backfire hard enough now that they're just like, because uh, it's like, so the first thing out of your mouth is a lie. Right. How can I trust anything else? Right. You know, like, what are you on my doorstep for then? You're trying to establish credibility. That's like, it should be the yeah. very first thing you do. Yeah. Yeah, totally agree. So, because you never jumped in the door-to-door -door sales world, right? I tried it. I lasted about four hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, this is not for me. I, I'm pretty quick to to figure out what I like and what I don't like, yeah. you know, not doing taxes, not doing door to door. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty stubborn, hard headed in that way of like, I know what I want and I, I like what I like. Yeah. And so, yeah, even to get me to switch from a Samsung to an iPhone, <laughs> that was more so to like, just rep the brand because all of our stuff is Apple. Yeah. So we've got the AirPod cases, you've got the phone cases, you got the, you know, watch bands and so it's like i was just like i want to be able to be a walking billboard more than just like you know wearing a t-shirt yeah so do you guys sell products for the samsung lineup uh we used to uh not anymore they don't sell well do they they don't it's it's hard you know android yeah. you know and we we get this a lot too it's like why don't you make uh a laptop cover for a dell and I mean, I, I use a Dell, I'm, I'm used to the windows platform. So it's like, yeah. okay, that's where I'm not going to switch. I'll, I'll be hard headed there, but it'll take two years. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I mean, yeah. yeah, we'll see. Um, but the, the thing is, is like with Android, they've got like 60 different phones and with, you know, with the windows operating system, those manufacturers that that use that it's like Dell HP it's like even with those two I mean there's like 15 different SKUs just with those manufacturers alone right and so it's like how do you how do you approach it so that you can make the biggest bang and reach the most people without having to like diversify and, and stretch yourself thin yeah I know a, uh, a cell phone cover maker um, and they don't even, they will not touch anything but Apple. Yeah. They, their market research from, and I don't know if this is true or not, but it basically says that, you know, they're like, it's like four to one Apple buys versus like a Samsung buy or Nokia or whatever. So even though it's the same ad spend, 
right? Because you're targeting just the general population at that point. They're like, we just stick stick with Apple because people who own Apples will actually pay for a premium premium product, where the Samsung guys won't. Right. Yeah, and that and that's the thing too is like, even though I think maybe Android users are, you know, that number is bigger worldwide, but like I said, it's, it's spread between like sixty different models of phones. Yeah. Whereas with Apple, you at least can cover three generations, you know, the 12, 13, 14. Um, so it's a lot easier to hit. And and you know that when Apple comes out with a new phone, it's just like, okay, we only need to come out with four SKUs and then maybe a few different colors. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're good. And they sell. They sell very well. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got a lot of people that think our stuff's better than Apple's well, case. I believe it. Oh, I mean, you, see. you just barely gave me a case. I gotta, I'm gonna yeah. throw it on my phone here for a minute. But I, I, I've, I've historically been, you know, I've got a clear case on my phone. But I, I've always liked the leather ones. The problem is, is like, see, I, I, I know your quality because you know you've given me some things, and I've, I've seen it with some other people. I, I love the quality of your guys' stuff. It's there. Thanks. But when you go online um, to like, let's just say Amazon, right? Mm-hmm. It is really hard to see which is good quality, which is bad yeah. quality, you know? So then I, I feel like it, historically I've been burned many times where I'm just like, nah, I'm not going to buy anything leather on Amazon because it's just, yeah. you can't trust them. Well, Amazon's difficult because, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we shifted too. I mean, that was a perfect opportunity in 2017 to, to own the customer. Yeah. And then you've got so much competition on Amazon and all, all they have to do is just change the price by like, you know, <laughs> seven cents and they're going to show a little bit higher than you. Yeah. And it's like, you, you may have a better product and, but they don't know. But at the same time too, it's also difficult to demonstrate that quality of, of a good leather good. Cause it's like, it's so palpable. Yeah. You know, there's just a smell attached to it. It's the feel. And, and so it's like, how do you, how do you project that on the website? And even through Amazon, it's like, how do you project quality through the website? Right. Video is probably the best, right? Actually, you want to know how you do it, in my opinion, which is probably wrong. Price point. You know, you're buying a freaking case for 20 bucks. It's a piece of shit case. Yeah, you probably, you're probably right? getting what you pay for. Yeah. I mean, I fight this with So I'm kind of a foodie, right? And people will be like, oh, dude, let's go over to like Longhorn Steakhouse. And I'm like, bro. Yeah, no. Dude, that is like a <laughs> terrible steak. Like, what are you talking about? Well, I'm okay. like, it's 20 bucks. Yeah. Like, you cannot get a good steak for 20 bucks, you know? I think a lot of people think like, well, it's a good deal. It's a good bargain. And it's like, dude, yeah, but you're eating like crap meat and crap cuts. And you yeah. know what I mean? It's the same thing with, with a, well, well, sushi is another thing, right? For me, like all you can eat sushi. No, nope. won't touch it, bro. No, nope. it's day old. There's all sorts of things with it that you are, you think you're getting a value, right? But you're actually not. It's like gas it, station sushi. Same right. level. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and you want to be in the world where, you know, you're, you're, you're getting a high quality item for a fair price. When you right. connect those two things, that's when you know you're getting what you want. Right. Like you're saying, like your, your cases will last forever, you know, even though Apple's going to release a new freaking phone every year and I'm addicted to buying the new one. Right. Yeah. But you know what I mean? But like, you know, your wallet, see like your wallet, I'm loving the wallet because I like the functionality of the wallet. I like that it holds everything together. It's just, it's the exact size that I like. And it's like, yeah, I will have this wallet for years. Are you using the pilot? Yeah. 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 I think it's the pilot. It's the one. Yeah. The one with the, yeah. It's the one you showed me earlier. I guess yeah. we could, for the uh, audio listeners, I'll have to check out the video, but yeah. Got a little. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I love that. It's such a, yeah, we're doing a commercial on it and uh, we just ended up filming two weeks ago now. And uh, one of my favorite lines that just made me laugh every single time was, you know, it's like a fidget spinner, but my friends won't make fun of me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or people clicking it a lot. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I find myself doing it just, having something at my desk when I'm on a call just like playing with something. So I'm, yeah. I'm surprised that I'm just like, I, I, I'm yeah. trying to be on my best behavior right now. Keep it in my pocket. So I'm not sitting there. With that See, I, I leave mine in my truck. That's why I don't have it on me right now is I just, I used to, I, I lose my wallet every now and again just to make my wife go crazy. Cause I'm like, have you seen my wallet? And she's like, you always do this, you know? <laughs> and so maybe a couple of years ago or maybe less than that, I just decided I'm like, okay, I'm just going to keep my wallet in my truck. And that's where it is. So if I can't find my wallet, it's in the truck. Yeah. It served me pretty good. Yeah. But, you know, every now and again, I need it. I got to go out to the tr- truck and get it and that kind of stuff. So I don't yeah. normally have it on me a lot. But well, the if, only, yeah, the if only, you lose it, you've got a wallet dealer now. So oh, yeah. 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 
Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. No, I know. I love it. And I like the compactness of wallets. I don't like the big fold. Keep your flipping papers in there. Mm-hmm. Like miss me with that. I don't, I don't even like stuff in my pockets. Like even my phone, yeah. you know, I like when I sit down at my desk, my phone goes to the side of me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mostly so when I'm on zoom calls, it looks like I'm paying attention, but I'm actually on my phone answering emails. <laughs> yeah. We did a, we did an ad that we just thought was funny. Um, my mom didn't think it was very appropriate, but <laughs> those are the best ones. <laughs> <laughs> I came up with the tagline, the copy for it, and it was uh, the the bulk in your pockets shouldn't be your wallet. Nice. <laughs> and yeah, she didn't she didn't appreciate that one. <laughs> shouldn't have bored or something, or just have to. It was. It had a video along with it. The guy was adjusting himself. Oh really? Yeah. Nice. 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 So when you're running that, when, when you say you're running a, a commercial, are you, it's, it's your ad on social media though, right? Are you actually doing like TV? Well, so it's like, we had a full production crew. We had actors like really? casting. Yeah. Like full blown. It was interesting. Yeah. I, I've never, yeah. I kind of had an idea of like how Hollywood worked and I mean, to a certain extent. Right. But when you go and show up on set and you know, you're behind one of those little monitors and you got the little headphones on. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's surreal. They, they record you from, I wasn't on camera. I didn't want to be on camera, yeah. but they record the actors from like every single angle, like front, back, side, you know, left, right, right whatever. And then they do close ups on every, so we, I think we had four, four people in a scene, four or five. And they had to do the scene. Like, I don't know how many times, but they, everybody ran their lines. They filmed it from all angles. And then they did a close up and, so we'll see. They're cutting it up right now, going through the editing process. We should see it next week, and then we should be able to start putting it out there by or before Black Friday. Oh, cool. So how come you went with such a professional one? Uh, we just felt like it was the next step. We're always talking about, okay, what's the thing that's going to take us to the next level? Yeah. And we felt like that was going to be it. And uh, this company that we've worked with, they've had a lot of success with other companies, a lot of Utah-based companies. Yeah, uh, you know, it just makes it easier because they're here and they, you know, they can. Is all the production here in Utah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. So we shot down in Provo in a studio down there and uh, did like a department store set set up and it was wild. It was just like in a big warehouse and yeah, they shifted the whole thing. I mean, it looked like it was just everything was thrown together. So like you go when you show up, you're just like, how are they going to make this happen? And you know, they had their art department and they they made it happen. Mm. So we'll see what it looks like. Excited to see it. Um, Are they expensive? Yeah, it was not cheap. Nice. Yeah, it was not. <laughs> Were you sticker shocked by it? Not necessarily. I try not to be sticker shocked anymore. Um, and I guess when you get to a certain level, not saying we're at this like great level or anything, but uh, just you have those expectations that, okay, the, this is going to be probably expensive. Yeah. Um, I know I don't like to have expectations, but I know that, you know, when you, when you're dealing with something of quality like that, I, th- I knew it was up there, but I didn't think it was going to be that up there. So I was like, <laughs> when he told us the price, you know, we're on a video call and stuff. And I just, you know, had my face, it's just yeah, yeah. try not to show anything yeah, like, right. Oh, dang. Yeah. Yeah. You never <laughs> want to do that. Look on the zoom. <laughs> yeah. You reserve those, those reactions to the after call. See, I, I've never wrote the check for something like that, but I've been on a few sets. Um, we actually rented a basketball court one time for a, was, what were they selling? I can't remember what they were selling, but um, it was a real minor part of the whole thing, right? But dude, mm-hmm. I'm looking at like the cost of everything and I'm like, dude, this is not cheap. Yeah. Just building the set is expensive. Yeah, yeah we you had know? a cow too in ours. Did you really? Yeah, a live cow. <laughs> did, did they make all the arrangements for that? And Pretty guys, much, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that was the nice thing about it. It was like, you know, they, they gave us the script. We went through it. We said, we didn't like this line. We liked this one better. You know, there's a few jokes in there that they thought that we were going to get rid of, and we're like, no, keep them in there. Um, you know, which is kind of funny for our brand. Like, if you look at our Instagram, it's like very lifestyle. It's got a, you know, I, I hate this word. I hate to say it, but it's got a vibe. Um, yeah. Uh, but... Yeah, so it's not so much like product centric. It's, you know, we want to produce this feeling. And uh, so you don't get a lot of like humor from it. Um, I feel like, you know, I, I like to laugh. My brother likes to laugh. Like we have a great time at the office. Like we have a really good culture. And 
love to just have fun. And so you don't get a lot of that. And so going into this commercial, I was just like, I think we got to do a little bit of humor. I mean, they also specialize in humor too. So they get a lot of their actors come are comedy writers and, oh, cool. you know, from Hollywood and stuff. And so I, I was like, okay, maybe we should take that rather than being like more informational and, you know, like brand awareness, let's, let's stick a little humor in there. Cause that's, you know, at the end of the day, like that's what captures people's attention is yeah. humor. And so, yeah, there's a few jokes in there. It's just like, yeah, I don't know, maybe PETA will, will hit us up. But <laughs> it's just like you either love leather and can appreciate it or you don't. And it's just like, if you don't, then just move on. Yeah. So we know, we know our space. We know where we're at. You know, you mean it's caught flack from PETA? No. Oh, okay. No. That's cool. My, uh, my, one of my dad's really good friends, a guy I really respect. He owns a mink farm here in Utah. Yeah. He said to deal with, uh, he, I don't know if it was PETA itself, but like human or uh, animal rights activists opening the cages and just letting out a whole oh, bunch of geez. meat into the city of San or uh, what's up, Spanish Fork. Okay. It's like, what was your plan? You know, animal yeah. rights activists, they're just going to go into people's yards and get shot and, you know, yeah, shovel to death. Roadkill. Yeah. 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 Uh, it is pretty brutal watching a mink get uh, skinned, though. But <laughs> you know, that's a YouTube uh, rabbit hole I haven't been down. <laughs> oh, dude, I watched it when I was a kid, man. My girl, I grew up in Highland, Highland Alpine area, right? Yeah. And my best friend's dad, growing up, ran a mink farm, and uh, I mean, they pretty much grab it, slam it on a peg, Jeez. skin it. I don't know if they knock it out before it. I can't really remember. I just remember going in like this bloody room, just like, you know, and my two friends were just like, yeah, this is where they cut the skins off. You know what I mean? I actually never watched it. I just like heard the process and because I was probably like seven. It'd be yeah pretty terrible to watch oh, yeah, a seven year old watch yeah, that. that opening experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, I mean, you know, farmers, right? Farmers and dairy guys. And dude, it's just, it's the flipping circle of life out there, man. It's just. Yep. Yeah, cow dies, it's sick, you'll do this, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just like, just is what it is. Yeah, man, it's like, why not Why not take that, you know, just kind of how the Indians took the buffalo and they would use every aspect of, yeah. of the buffalo. You know, it's like, why why not continue to do the same? I mean, there yeah. is that sustainability of it. Um, so, yeah, we, we luckily we don't partake in that part of the yeah. manufacturing. We, we source our leather from all over, you know, got places here in the States, you know, we get, we get our cactus leather in Mexico and, yeah. you know, so it's like Argentina, Brazil, like it's all over the place. So, so when you buy the leather, are you, are you guys actually sourcing the leather or as the manufacturer of the stuff sourcing it? Uh, some of the stuff we do. Yeah. Really? Okay, cool. Yeah. Is that more specialty item type thing? Is that why? More? Yeah. More of like the cactus leather. Yeah. Um, yeah. We try to stay out of, as much of that as you can, because, you know, just like going back to the filming aspect, there's so many moving parts to it, you know, in a manufacturing, as you know, there are so many different moving parts. It's mm -hmm. like, if you can have, you know, certain aspects of the business already running, then it's, it's so much easier to, yeah. to do, but we do all of our designs. We, we, we design everything on our end. Oh, cool. And then just don't have to. Who does the design for you guys? Do you work on that or is it? Uh, I'll give my input, but it's mostly my brother. We're looking yeah. for a designer uh, right now. Oh, okay. To just kind of help us scale that because sometimes some of our products, I mean, like the backpack that I gave you there, mm -hmm. Manhattan, that probably took about a year to develop. And so some things take longer. Some things we can draw up on a piece of paper with some dimensions and get a couple of samples and just nail it right away. Yeah. Other things take, you know, we've got a, a duffel bag, like a travel bag coming out. And that thing's probably taken about a year as well. Oh, wow. Like 10 different samples and renditions. and That should do pretty well, right? There's a lot of people into duffels. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty popular right now. And so that's one of the things we're trying to take advantage of is, you know, if we can have a designer that, that can jump on all aspects of, like, knowing what's in and being able to take advantage of it, being able to produce it, get it out there. Yeah. Um, like we've got those belt bags, you know, like the fanny packs. Yeah. Those are real popular, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're very popular. I see a lot right of now. bros wearing those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I couldn't pull it off. I just, I yeah, couldn't pull no. it off. Dude, a lot of NFL guys wear them. Yeah. Probably a lot of sports guys, but I just, I kind of, I feel like the NFL guys are just, yeah, they've always got it like a, 
we call them a bum bag or a fanny pack, right? Yeah, fun, you know? fanny pack. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we try not to. We try to stay away from like, the word fanny. Yeah. Yeah. So we call it the the belt bag. Yeah. You know, you can wear it across your chest. You can yeah. wear it like an old school fanny. Um, but we, yeah, we we came out with ours two weeks ago. Sold out within about an hour. Oh, really? Yeah. So. That's a good feeling. Yeah. How do the backpacks do? They do pretty well. We were yeah. we were a bit nervous because it was our highest price point mm -hmm. product, but you know it's got the most leather. It's the most expensive thing to produce, and mm -hmm. so we were a little nervous of like putting it out there and like, okay, are people going to buy it? I mean, that ten, tends to be like everything you put out there. Like, okay, are right. people going to buy it? <laughs> Unless it's like a phone case, you know that you know it's it's got some history. It's just the next version. Yeah, but, but still though, right? I mean, part of being a business owner, right, is it's like shit. I hope someone buys this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, like we we put it out there. We, I don't think we had a sale within the first, like, 12 to 24 hours. We were just, like, second-guessing everything. We were like, oh, yeah. shoot, is it too high? And then it's like, and it was sold a ton just the next couple of days after yeah. that. So it's, like, one of those things where it's not it's not one of those impulse purchases, like, you know, say, a phone case or a wallet that is a small price point. Yeah. It's one of those things where you gotta you got to hit them up a couple of times, get them, get them retargeted and... Yeah. Send them a little more emails, just educating about why you should get this bag. And, yeah. But you know, going back to you know the the individuals that are very interested in you know Ondar, they've got everything. You know, they go, they'll get a wallet. Next thing, they'll get a phone case, and it's kind of like they. We wanted to create an ecosystem. Yeah. And so we find that the individuals that do end up buying the bags are are the individuals that already have a lot of our stuff. So right. Kind of already sold on the brand. So are you guys, will you only do leather or would you ever get into fabrics? So we do um, a canvas. Yeah. So you, you notice there's some canvas in, in the inside of your bag. Yeah. Um, we have some products that we, I guess it's it's one of the materials that we use. But yeah, like our belt bag has a, instead of like an all leather strap, this was kind of a different approach. We have like a canvas strap. So, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, could down the road. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to have for dinner, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, me either. <laughs> I, guess, I guess we'll figure it out, yeah. Well, that's fun, man. So what, what do you think the most, uh, let's go challenging. What's the most challenging thing about running your guys' business right now? I say right now it's just the growing pains of we're at that point of the next hires. Who's going to help us? take us to that next level. That's always the question we have is like, yeah. what's going to take us to the next level and, and adding individuals that can help take us there. Because I, I never want to be the smartest guy in the room. I rarely am. Um, you know, unless it's, I'm in with my kids, but yeah. <laughs> they think otherwise, but <laughs> I let them know. Um, so we want individuals to come in and kind of take over areas that we're not necessarily experts in and, and really, give them the autonomy to make those decisions and, and help us grow. So yeah. that's probably the biggest struggle right now is just finding good, solid people that, that can help us grow. Yeah. Cause we've got a great team right now. We've got a lot of good individuals and it's just, you know, taking maybe higher skilled individuals that have been doing this for years and years, you know, like maybe a CFO and maybe like a CMO and yeah, and injecting them into the business. And it's tough too, because you already have an established culture. It's like, will they fit? Are they gonna be too serious? Are they gonna be like, hey, you know, you can't do that, or you can't do this? That's our thing. We always discuss how we hire basically on culture almost exclusively. So you gotta check, do the little checklist to make sure we think you're competent for the job, and then it's almost always just culture fit. Yeah, it's like personality, like you yeah. fit. You, are you gonna bring drama? Yeah, or, or yeah, or just be too stiff, or like just they don't feel comfortable in a certain environment, or you right. know, there's a lot of there's a lot of factors, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So we have one guy. I don't know if he listens to the podcast or not, but he. Uh, <laughs> I guess you'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> but he's a loud chewer, right? He oh. might not even know he's that guy, right? And so one of my employees, it was hilarious because so I was driving one of his guys crazy that was real close to him right yeah and so one of my employees kept walking over to him and giving him corn nuts right just to freaking see how loud he could go i mean it's bananas i was in a meeting with him one time 
and uh, they had brought us cookies. Yeah. And he's just like destroying this cookie. And I like could not, <laughs> I like have a disease where I can't hear people smack their lips, right? I can't stand that either. And dude, I was just <laughs> like, hold on, finish that cookie. And he's all, <laughs> <laughs> and we just like waited and I was like, okay. Because <laughs> I was just like, I can't focus on what this dude is saying. It's driving me crazy. But, um, you know, yeah, so you can't put someone next to him. You'd be sensitive to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like I mean I love the guy; it's freaking amazing. But it's just, it's, it's just it's it, co- company culture is very interesting. Yeah, you know, do you feel like your company culture is part of your personality, or your personality has influenced the company culture? I should say. I would say so. Yeah, I mean I'm not there on a daily basis, but I'm I'm interacting with them on a daily yeah. basis with whether it's you know on the phone or via Slack or mm-hmm. or video calls and meetings and stuff. Um, you know, and I go to go down to Arizona all the time, but yeah, I would, I would say it's a big part in my personality, Jacob's personality. Yeah. I mean, that, that's one of the things that we, we tried to do very early on because it, you know, I, and that's the thing too, is like with my previous company that I worked for, I had this, the guy that I, I butted heads with, he was, you know, he, he, re, he would read a book and then he would try to implement it. And he read this book on culture. And he goes in and tries to change the culture of the company. And it's like, culture is established at a very yeah. early point of the business. You know, at that point, I think they've been around for 10 years. It's like, you can't just come in and say, this is how I want the culture to be. It doesn't yeah. work like that. So yeah, you have to establish it very early on. And uh, that, so knowing that, learning that from you know, other people's mistakes, you just take that and try to, try to establish it. But it's not even a, a thing that you can even teach per se it's almost yeah. like like you said it's almost inherited in the personality of of the people who run the business yeah i feel I, I guess what happens to me every now and again so adp lemco is probably the one i interact with all the employees the most mm-hmm. and when i go in there like there's certain things that i'm like oh we do this because this is how i like it done yeah you know what i mean yeah and so um which is good you know i most people like the way they do things, you know? Right. And I, I don't know. I've, I've, I've kind of been stuck on company culture a little bit for a little while, just in my head, like, oh, this is like majorly important. Cause I think, um, you know, cause none of my companies are mega billion dollar companies. Right. And so I look at some of those guys, like the Googles and the Facebooks, you know, like you go and work for them and it's like, you play f- ping pong all day and like yeah. they have chefs for you. you know? I'm like, when the hell does anybody work? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And like, cause my, my opinion is I don't want to take a one hour break and play ping pong every day. I want to get my work done and leave. And right. if I leave it two, great. If I leave it seven, eh, you know what I mean? And I think almost every employee I've hired has that same attitude. Yeah. Like no one wants just to just done. hang out at the office all day. Right. They want to like feel good, feel like they've accomplished stuff, get the hell out of the office and go home to their family or friends or whatever they do. Yeah. You know? And so... But I know a lot of people, man, that love the ping pong yeah. or the foosball or the video games. And I'm like, you hate your family? Like, why are you here? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, I think that's it's where we're getting to. You know, we, we'd love to be able to. I mean, I work from home most of the time. Yeah. So I am with my family. They're in the background. I mean, I've been working from home since 2017. So it's like, you know, even before it was cool with yeah. COVID. Um, but yeah, I'd see them all the time. They know the rules. Doors are shut. You don't come in. Yeah. My seven year old still, he's still trying to learn those rules. <laughs> dad, dad, I just got a question for you. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Door is shut. Go away. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that's something we're trying to work towards is like just trying to be home with the family more. Um, and so, yeah, we do have the culture of like, we have a lot of young people though, too. So they don't necessarily have their spouses, they don't have kids. Yeah, fair. Um, so we don't necessarily have that. So we are essentially a family. You know, we've got our group chat and a lot of people hang out with one another after hours and on weekends. Oh. And so it's always good to see. Yeah. I think, in fact, yeah, we only have one other employee, two two employees that are actually married. Really? But no, have, don't have kids, yeah. Interesting. So it's a very young group. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think I, I think almost every guy I have in that one company is married. Nope, I have one single guy. Two, two single guys. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah, It's interesting. Like business is fun, man. It's just crazy. How do you like working from home? I love it. I mean, I, I did the whole office thing for years. So it's like, I've had my experience. It's like, I don't need to go back and do that, but I'm sure at some point I will, you know, if it's moving down to Arizona and just market's too crazy right now anyway. So it doesn't make sense financially to, to make that move. But yeah, I feel like I'm very effective with what I do at home. Like I've, I mean, I've been doing it for five years now, so it's almost to go into an office would just kind of be weird. Yeah. I don't know how effective I would be because then you have all those distractions. So that's, that's the nice thing about it. All my kids are in school. Yeah. You know, they go, they go full time. So there isn't that distraction of, of them bugging me at least until they get home around three, but right. You know, so it's pretty quiet and you get a lot done. So I feel like I'm, I'm very effective. And do you have like a study that you're in? Yeah, I've got an office. Your office, yeah. Yeah. During COVID, I was I was kind of wondering if it was going to actually shift the real estate market into the, like homes having to have an office. Yeah. You know? Like at least having that extra room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's not awesome to be down in the basement with no light, stuck in a dark room all day, you know, yeah. which I think a lot of people ended up doing. Or, or they were in an open area because their house wasn't big enough to even have an office, you know? Yeah, no, I, I started in my basement. Um, and we hadn't finished, so we'd finished our basement, but hadn't finished all of it. So I was in what we dubbed the theater room now. So we right. finished that since, but you know, it was quiet. We had already soundproofed it, but I was on like a little Costco folding table. And then I had, you know, I'm one to use a lot of monitors. And so I had my two monitors with a third up at the top and I made the mistake of opening the window and I uh, went up to go eat dinner and I came back down <laughs> and there was a breeze that had come through and just blew one of my monitors down and just cracked it. And I was like, oh, okay, really? I can't do this. <laughs> but I, I do have a dedicated office just right off the front door. And no. we hadn't at that point finished it or like at least gotten to a point where it would be a workable space. And yeah. obviously since have has switched that up and, and made it as such, but yeah, it is a dedicated, I think it's always was built to be out as an office. Oh, good. So that's where I'm at now. Yeah. See my my I don't work from home, but my uh, but you're pretty close though, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm like eight minutes, nine minutes yeah. at the most. Yeah. On that's purpose. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least you get that like ten minute drive to where you can shut things off. It's yeah. long enough to where you can shut things off, and yeah, short enough to where you're just like, okay, this yeah. is this is not a bad drive. Well, and I I, mean, I look at like working from home, and I'm like, I can see some benefits to it. You know, I think over the next three or four, well. The biggest problem in my house, what I was going to say, is the actual office in my house is in the front of the house, you know, big French doors, blah, 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 yeah. all that stuff. It's hotter than hell in there, right? <laughs> it just heats up like crazy. Yeah. If you leave the door open, it's fine. But, you know, right. the, but then you get all the noise. Yeah, but you get all the noise and the kids, and I got a seven-year-old as well who's, yeah. there's no way she ain't coming in there, right? <laughs> yeah. So will just be in there holding my hand the whole time, you know? And right. so I, uh, but I, I think if I, if in the next house I either build or, I might put a massive garage in my backyard too. And if I do that, I'll put a, a full on office at the top of there yeah. where I'll just end up officing out of. Cause I could see going into the, to a couple of the offices a couple of times a week, you know, but then the rest of the time just being remote. Yeah. I mean, I run most of my business off my phone, you know, I mean, yeah. it's really just email. People just email right. me asking me bazillion questions or requesting things or, you know, directing business that way. But yeah, for me, I mean, I think for me, it is very tempting to work from home. And so, and I think if my kids were out of the house, I think I would prefer to work from home. You know, just being with yeah. the wife all day and kind of hanging. And yeah, I might move to that. Yeah. Yeah. Throw, the, throw a podcast studio in the back there, too. Yeah. Yeah, do a podcast studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. The fun thing with the podcast is I, I did the podcast for really two reasons. The first one is I want a kind of a legacy for my kids. Right. You know? So if I, you know, in two years get hit by a bus, they've got couple hundred hours of their dad talking to people and seeing how he thinks and his attitude. And yeah, that's why I like, you know, you asked me earlier, like anything goes, it's like, yeah, pretty much anything goes. I mean, I'm just people, you know, I was kind of like a record or a journal of it because I'm a terrible journaler. Um, the other side of it is, is, you know, in my investment fund to kind of raise money and stuff, I think it's good for people to like, listen to me speak and how I think about things and see if they kind of align with that. Right. It's kind of a qualifier for people to go, Oh yeah, I do like him and 
or I understand why he thinks that way. And so when I'm actually pitching them on something or trying to raise money or, you know, or, or going into a business or something like that, it's like, yeah, yeah, I, I kind of like this about that guy or, or they might even have a question for him. Like, Hey, you said this on a podcast one time and be like, yeah, I kind of think that, or maybe I don't anymore. Or, you know, just kind of a nice introduction to like my personality, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of funny, right? You come down here and I mean, we were joking earlier. It's like, I got like, you know, do you want to promote anything to my five followers and, <laughs> you know, see how big of a reach this thing is. One day. So, I mean, I, you know, usually when I, I listen to a podcast and I, I listen to quite a few, so I got, yeah. you're in my rotation there. Um, but I always go back to episode one because I feel like if I just jump into like the current episode, even though it's like, it's the current stuff that's happening. Yeah. It's almost like I feel like I'm missing out, you know, on inside yeah. jokes or you, cause they always reference, Oh, we talked about this on this one. It's like, I, I don't know. So I just feel like I have to right. start from the beginning. Right. It's like you don't ever jump into a Netflix series on season four. No. <laughs> you got to start from the beginning. So, so who's your, who's your favorite podcast to listen to? Yeah. Oh, I mean, Joe, Joe Rogan's always a good one. Yeah. I like Joe. I got Jimmy in there. Um, I've got some sports ones that I list to. You know, local teams. I'm an Arizona guy. So I'm a big Phoenix Suns fan. If you're trying to keep up with that, because I'm sorry to hear that. No, I'm just kidding. I was gonna say <laughs> the Suns are great. If, if you're a Utah Jazz fan, I don't know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you bro, to to. the Jazz are the worst <laughs> girlfriend I've ever had in my entire life, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's I don't. Right. I, I can. I mean, can you even name the starting five? Um, I know they have Lori Marketing because he was a U of A guy. I'm a U of A guy, so I know that he's on the team. Yeah. Colin Sexton. Jordan Clarkson. That's about it. Couldn't tell you That's more else. than I knew. Yeah. I keep on forgetting about Colin Sexton. I feel like they just just blasted the team out there, which is fine. Yeah. It, needed to, it needed to happen. I, I don't actually disagree with it. But I'm like... Well, you, got, I, you got Ainge running the show. He's he's thinking he's going to do a whole uh, another big three like he did in Boston. And Is well, it the plan? I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> Boston's one thing. Those guys never consult with me. It pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think they'll do it here. I don't think he can recreate that here in Utah. It's like... I don't think we can either, Boston's man. A, people want to go play for Boston. It's a storied franchise. Yeah. People want to go and be a part of that. And I don't know necessarily they'd want to say the same thing about the Utah Jazz. No, we had our two years that we could have won it. Michael Jordan stuffed us both times. I love the... Love that, yeah. No idea. Oh, I was, I was a huge Michael Jordan fan. Still oh, am. Yeah. 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 But at the same time, so it was like when they played the Suns and, and Barkley back in, what, 94? That was that was rough as a kid just oh, trying to choose. Who else was on that team? Was Kevin Johnson on that team? Kevin Johnson, Dan Marley, Tom Chambers. Oh, yeah, I saw Dan Marley on the team. Yeah. So that was the old, old yeah. school days. Kind of dates me a little bit. Have you guys won a championship? No, I don't think so. I mean, I not, in my, not in my lifetime. Yeah, I don't think they have. No, they. I don't think they have either. Which is interesting, dude, because Phoenix is the fifth largest city in the country. Like you have the market to support it. Yeah. See, we don't. I don't know if we have the market or don't anymore. It's almost like the markets. You know, you could be anywhere, I guess. But like at the same time, not really. Yeah. You kind of need to be like on the Lakers or the Celtics or Miami seems to be a decently hot team. But well, we don't have an owner that wants to spend the money. Sarver, he's on his way out though. I was gonna say I don't know if he's yeah. your owner no more. Yeah, he's yeah. on his way out. He's gonna be selling the company. He bought it for four hundred million. He's probably gonna sell it for three to four billion. It's crazy, bro. Okay, I have a conspiracy theory on this. Okay, right? um, Steve Ballmer, not Steve Ballmer. Who's the guy before him? Don Sterling was an yeah. asshole for forty years. Yeah, right. Yep. Dude's on the way out. Almost senile. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, he does something racist, I guess, right? Doesn't want black players coming to his <laughs> game with his freaking girlfriend because he's with his wife. I mean, who the hell knows what he's saying, right? Right. Pretty mild, though. I think we can all agree, pretty mild. All of a sudden, he takes a team that he bought for $2 million, right? That sucks. Sells it for $2 billion. That's crazy. Every other franchise literally got like a $800 million bump, yeah. right? And it's like... Wait, number one, how can you just rip a guy's ass out of way? But okay, let's just say that's part of the rules or whatever, right? I just think it was a payday. I think it was the way to sell the team instead of putting it into the open market. I think they just sold it that way. And that was, it's a Sarver, right? Yeah. So a Sarver, 
little more inflammatory. Still not like rip the team away kind of thing, but now they're going to end up selling that team. And I just have a hard time believing it's like, is this the new playbook? Like with the owners to kind of yeah. say something inflammatory and all of a sudden you get like a massive payday. Cause you're right, dude, it'll yeah. sell for, I mean, three would shock me, but wouldn't shock me at the same time. Right. Cause with yeah. inflation and everything, I mean, can you imagine that $3 billion? It's crazy. They, so they're, they're trying to, I guess there was a guy out in England or Europe, and I don't, I don't even know how much I can comment on this, but essentially they wanted to apply the same rule. The guy was a jerk, made some comments, did some stuff that yeah. probably wasn't appropriate, and he ended up having to sell his soccer team, his soccer club. But they put a rule on it that he couldn't gain a profit on the sale. And so he basically had to sell it for what he bought it for. So they're like, well, let's implement right. this rule in the States. I'm like, well, first of all, you can't do that. I mean, there's a reason why we, you know, 1776, but. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I, you know, I could imagine that you can't, I mean, you can't do that. No. The guy, how much has he put into it anyway? I mean, he's, he's known for not opening his, his wallet to expand and, and pay the luxury tax, so. But I'm sure he's probably lost money, spent more money along yeah. the way that you can't just say, okay, you bought it for 400 million, you're only gonna get 400 million back. It's not gonna work like that. I know, it's like tax on a 401k. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, on the year it's down or the year it's up, you know? like. Plus it's like, I don't know, it's one thing to take the asset and sell it for him because he's breaking the governor's rules or whatever the crap, right? right? But for no profit, that's some socialistic yeah. bull crap. Yeah, I don't support that. You know, they're talking about Bezos, Jeff Bezos buying it. I mean, I haven't heard anything about him saying that he wants to buy it. Yeah. But I imagine it's probably an in for him. And and if there's anybody that I would like to buy the company, it would be someone that just has just stupid money. So stupid money would no be excuse. good, but you also want them to be a massive fan. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, I mean, there's Steve Ballmer, which is he's a little nutty. But he's a fan also, though. Yeah, he is he's a fan. very much a fan. Yeah, he just made a, he just made a bad combination. Kawhi and Paul. It's just not a winning combo. No. You know? But um we'll see how it all turns out. Yeah, I was gonna say I think Kawhi I think he's I think he's in the last year of his deal. He's kind of an injury bug dude, and then I like Kawhi. I think Kawhi's a, a, a great player and everything. Yeah. But like, dude, he only has to play sixty five games a year. It's like in his contract. Like, that is the one thing that I'll give a massive nod to Michael Jordan to. Bro never missed games. Right. If he missed games, he was actually hurt or he was actually sick. You know what I mean? It's one of the things. I'm a LeBron James fan, right, on the court. And uh, he he's durable. You know what right. I mean? You know, the last couple of years, he's had a couple injuries. He had the freaking groin and stuff. But, like, it's an actual injury, you right. know? <clears throat> I feel like some of these new guys are just like, ah, oh, I don't know. Yeah, let's cool. get to the playoffs and who really cares what's going on. You know what I mean? Yeah, twenty years is a long time. Did you guys keep your same team from last year? Pretty much. The only the only Aiden's guy that, gone though, right? No, he's there. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. They he got a uh, he signed a deal with Indiana, but, but because he was a restricted free agent, they could match it. Oh, and they so did. They match it within seconds. Oh, okay. And the funny part about it all is, in order for Indiana to Sign that deal with Aiton, or at least offer it. They had to release a couple of players, you know, Dwayne oh. Washington Jr. being one of them. And he's he's a stud. I think he'll he'll do well. And so Phoenix ended up actually picking him up. So they got Aiton <laughs> back, and they got one of the the Pacers guys. One of the Pacers guys, the young Jeez, young talented guy. So we'll see, we'll see how it turns out. What's your chances this year? <sighs> I thought they were pretty good back in the Bucks when they were playing the Bucks in the finals. Um, I don't know. That's the thing is like every time you look at it, it's like the league's just very talented. There's a lot of elite players, yeah. and even some of the bums that you're like, okay, yeah, this I can't even say they're bums. You look at them; they're very, very talented people. They're the best player that you know individuals have seen come through their city yeah. ever. You know, it's like a kid growing up in a small town that ends up going to the NBA. That that individual obviously is going to be the greatest player they see. But you'll have an individual that grows up and goes and plays for some, you know, 4A college, um, 
it's not good. Division two, I should say. Division yeah. two college, I'm thinking high school. Yeah. But, and that individual will be the best player that some of those people in that town will ever see play. Oh, for sure, yeah. And it's just like the skill level that you have to be at to just be on the pro level is just crazy. Oh, yeah. Well, there's well, 30 teams and there's 15 guys a team. Yeah. There's just not that many dudes. That's why the contracts are so massive. Because you know, it's the same contract, it's the same kind of structure as the NFL, right? You, yeah. They get X amount of revenue from you know the overall revenue, and that's what the teams get to like you know kind of do their their player contracts and stuff. They do have the luxury, the option to have you know the hard cap like the NFL, but it's like yeah, man, you can pay these bros a lot of money because the league makes a lot of money. Yeah. And so, but I'll it'll be really interesting. I think Golden State is probably going to take it again this year. If they can keep a level head, you saw Draymond punch yeah. Jordan Poole in the face, right? And if they stay healthy, I think they'll. Yeah, if they stay healthy. Out. I mean, Clay's back. Pretty much the whole band's back. Wiggins is there. Wiggins is playing pretty good. There. What's their big boy? Wiseman. Yeah. Was is he second year or third year now? Do you remember? I think he's third, but he's he also had injuries and had to go play in the G League. Yeah. yeah. He was supposed to be pretty good. Yeah. So if they can figure that out with him. He's I mean, they'd be dangerous. People always like to bust my balls about the Lakers being good because I like LeBron, right? And I'm just like, who's on the Lakers? Freaking Russell Westbrook and... Mr. Glass. Yeah, Mr. Glass. It's like, dude. <laughs> I do not understand that combination ever. LeBron, James, and Russell. And supposedly they were going to get um, DeMar DeRozan instead of Westbrook. Yeah. And someone who will remain unnamed forced the, the thing with, for Westbrook. Interesting. It, it's just bananas, dude. But Westbrook just, I mean, what an athlete, dude. What a flipping just baller. But, like, I don't know, man. He shoots single digits in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Can't win. Yeah, he's had his, his time to shine. Yeah. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> I think so, too. <laughs> I bet they try to trade him like freaking crazy in the offseason. Well, they're trying to right now. Or even right now? Yeah. Yeah, who's going to pick that up? That's like a $42 yeah. billion dollar contract, if I remember right. You'll get a lot of players back, but... And you also have to trade some of your picks. Yeah. You're wasting another year of LeBron. Yeah. So we'll see what happens there. I think he's, the one thing that I hope happens for LeBron is that he gets to play with his kid. Yeah. You know, I think his kid's a senior in high school this year. So next year he'll go to one year of college and then he'll come to the league. And then LeBron's contract set up to go wherever he goes, he goes. Yeah. Right. And that would be, maybe that's what we do, man. Maybe the Jazz draft him. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. That, that's a funny combination, right? Because LeBron's still LeBron. I mean, he's still putting up great numbers. You know, he still had great years. I agree. I'd, I'd, I'd love to see LeBron play with his kid. I'm not, not kind of lost a lot of fandom in, in LeBron James, just some of the personal things he said. But yeah, but yeah. He's I would hard. like to see him. I yeah. would like to see him play with his kid. I think that would be fun. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, his personal stuff's kind of hard to listen to because it just seems so flippant, ill-informed. And What's well, because he's always on the first page of every book he reads. He never gets past that first couple Bro, pages. I've noticed the same thing. You know, yeah, was, <laughs> gosh, man. I hate to bash on him. I love watching no, him play, he's, though. He's a great player. But yeah. Not the GOAT, but he's a great player. Yeah, probably not the GOAT. No, that'll be another check to see if people that I know listen to this. <laughs> I bought a Dennis Rodman signed jersey that's up in my office now. Uh -huh. So I can explain to people why Michael Jordan has three more. The dude, people go crazy every time I say that. I'm like, oh, right here, this is the reason he has three more. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, the, yeah, the one thing to get to wrap up the LeBron, LeBron talk is um, in two years, how good is he going to be? Is he 70% of how good he is now? 80%? Is he still as good as he is? Is he Tom Brady and dude never never stops? You know what I mean? Yeah. Is he 50%? Does he blow his knee out next year? You know what I mean? Like, is there, who knows how good he's going to be? Right. But then it's like, Bronny, it's like, how good's he? Right. You know, son of a star? That doesn't really work out very well. Tough. You know? Yeah. He's going to do one year of college. I don't know which college you'll end up at. I would assume it's going to be like USC or UCLA or something like that, right? Just keep it local and let's get you to the league. And then it's like, well, you know for a fact if you draft Bronny, you're going to get LeBron. Right. Right? But how good are both of them? You know? So do you pick him with a lottery pick? Do you take him later on? Do you, you know, who knows? Yeah. I mean, I don't think Bronny will be a clear consensus number one. 
Probably not. So I don't think he's I don't think he's big enough actually. He's pretty small, isn't he? He's I, know, I don't know. I know his other kid Bryce is like six five right now. So he's and he's a couple years younger. Oh, is he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw it the other day. I was like, oh, yeah. He's he's got his dad's height. You do not look at Bronny and think he's the same size as LeBron. That's all I know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's. I think he might be six three, six four. Yeah. But he's, yeah, I'll be. I'll be watching the draft though. Out. For sure, unless LeBron's injured, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you don't want to see that happen. You want to see guys call it on their terms and yeah, and walk away. Yeah, even if you're not a fan of the player, but yeah, I think he'll, he'll be the first one to play with his son, right? Is that the whole? I think so. Magic behind it, something like that. There, there might have been someone else that played together. I mean, baseball. You see it all the time, right? Yeah. and Gwyns. Well, that's because you don't have to be athletic to play baseball. <laughs> <laughs> You're also gonna get a lot. I'd like to see some hate on my. Uh, You're gonna social see who media. else is listening to this one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I, I baseball is a funny sport for me, man. I, I I don't mind watching the playoffs on TV, but I don't really have a team. But I love going to games. I've been to probably ooh, at least half a dozen Diamondback games. Yeah, you know, I'm in Arizona. Games on. It's like let's go. I love it. Yeah, we took our boys. So my, I just say boys because I'm I have one. My brother has two. And so it's been years. We used to have season tickets back when they won the World Series in you know, one. Nice. And you know, it's been a long time since I've been at the game. Just they haven't been very good, but yeah, yeah. we went for the experience. Yeah. And uh, took our dad and had had decent seats. It wasn't like we were gonna pay a lot of money to sit behind you know the dugouts or behind home plate or anything. But you know, it's low enough to where you could actually see the game and have the kids appreciate that. Yeah. The athletes in the game itself but they were playing the Padres and they were probably down I think it was like 7-0 or something like that just getting worked yeah they ended up coming back after like the seventh like seventh eighth and ninth inning I think it was the seventh inning stretch because we took a, a walker on the field and they came back and won it it was like <laughs> the most what was the what was the term it was like the biggest comeback ever in history that they have they had ever had. Oh, really? That's cool. So I was like, okay, if there's any game to go to, yeah. take your boy. You know, it's his first ball game. Yeah. That's it, right? It's some excitement, yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was it was torture the first six innings. My, <laughs> my son looked at me, he's like, can we go now? In the second inning, I was like, no, there's like three more hours. He's Oof. like, really? I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. But by the end, they loved it. There's some Cracker Jacks. <laughs> yeah. He's like, when you know, we got them food, and then they were yeah. occupied for a few yeah. A few innings, but the last, uh, I think the last game I went to live was, uh, Chicago Cubs. I was at the Cubs stadium versus the Pittsburgh pirates. And, um, it was just going by like so fast. I was like, Oh, this is kind of cool. You know, no one's hit, getting hits, blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah. He gets to like the fifth inning and this guy next to me goes, dude, this might be a perfect game. <laughs> and I'm like, what's a perfect game? You know, the guy starts, like, explaining it to me. Dude, sixth inning, bam. Seventh inning, bam. And you could feel, they started talking about it, like, on the uh, the loudspeaker, right? And yeah. there, was, there was, like, a crazy buzz going on, yeah. right? And um, I can't remember if it was the, the, the end of the seventh. I can't remember if it was top or bottom, right? And the, Or the beginning of the eighth. And uh, the Pirates freaking got a uh, base hit. Oh. And it was like a balloon exploded. Just oh. all. Is everybody, you know I mean? everybody going home now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like, it was kind of cool because, like, the one guy, I'm like, I'm like, oh, how often does that happen? The guy's like, six times maybe? And I'm like, in the history of baseball? He goes, yeah. And I was just like, oh, this is kind of cool. Yeah, that's a but lot I just thought, I'm like, this is so much like me just to be at this game that I don't really care about <laughs> to watch a guy pitch a perfect game. <laughs> yeah, <that laughs> you know it happens. I mean? It just happens in front of me. But yeah. then, oh, it didn't end up happening. But it makes sense why it's rare. I mean, yeah, it's freaking crazy. It's tough. So... Well, my friend, I think we're at the end of the podcast. Okay. I'm glad we talked some sports. I think you're the first guy I've talked a lot of sports with on here. Yeah. Sports are awesome. Yeah, I love them. It's a good distraction sometimes when you need it. Yeah, for sure. I know it's like some people are like, oh, it's just a distraction. You know, you got to pay attention to what's going on. It's like, nah, I need a distraction sometimes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like, let me let me just forget everything in the world and watch a basketball game. Yeah. So I always ask my guests for the best advice they have in two minutes. What do you got for us? What do I got? Well, I'm, I'm of the uh, mindset of just keeping everything simple. 
I don't feel like you have to have these elaborate quotes or uh, elaborate schedules of just trying to make it in life. I think it's really just simple. It's work hard. Don't have expectations. Be positive. Um, that's pretty much it. Hustle in silence and let your success make the noise. Awesome, man. That's what I live by. Great, great advice. I agree. Keep it simple. There's no other way to do it. Yep. So I used to, I actually used to say to people, I'm like, that's easy, that's easy, that's easy, that's easy. And what I really meant was it's simple. Yeah. Just do it. There's no need to make it more than it is. Yeah. Don't need to make, you don't need to add a spin of drama to it. Just go about it with a good attitude. Um, I think at the end of the day, everybody just wants to be positive or, or have that. I mean, I guess if you're, if you're the type of individual that just likes to stir things up and, and cause drama, then, I mean, you're going to. But I feel like for the most part, everybody just wants the good in life. And I think if you just take that approach and just yeah, work hard, put your head down, be positive, yeah, things will work out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you again for coming on the podcast. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, I, thanks for having I me. I like having willing guests comes on. And, yeah, it was awesome for you to just jump at the opportunity. So Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the President McCormack Podcast, brought to you by McCormack Foundation, Saxton Fund, ADP Lemco, and Professional Floor Systems. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast and keep up with Mark on Instagram at President McCormack.